I'm sorry I'm late. Where's Dixie? Oh, uh, she's upstairs. They're, they're both going through some old toys of Bobby's. We've had a wonderful visit. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I'm a little worried about Amara. She's not too psyched to go home. She's worried about a little problem we have, namely Opal. She uh, mentioned some difficulties. Yeah, well, you know what they say about mothers-in-law. They're just like fish. They both stink after three days. <laughs> Shh, you'll work something out. Yeah, I'm sure. Hey! Hey! Here we go! Hey, Oh, look who's here! Hey, hey, Daddy. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's up? Yeah, well, Mara said we could... Cortland Manor. Uh, hello? Palmer, Cortland, please. I'm, I'm sorry. He's not here right Where now. Where is he? Can I ask who's calling? This is the uh, overseas operator with an emergency call from Japan. Oh, well, I see. Uh, he's at the Pine Valley Hospital. He's at a board meeting. Pine Valley Hospital. Gotcha. Sayonara. Who's that? I'm not sure. The voice sounded awfully familiar. What's Palmer's ETA? His what? Estimated time of arrival. Oh. Huh. Well, he's at a hospital board meeting, and the... You should be here any minute, but you know how those can go on and on. Are you tired, baby? Are you sleepy? Huh? Yeah, you can just tell your mama you're going to stay up all night so you sleep late tomorrow morning. Oh, yes. you wish. Yes. Do you know what? Maybe we could stay out late enough so that Opal will be asleep by the time we get home. What do you think? Oh, don't bet on it, sweetheart. The hillbilly gorgon has been known to keep some late hours. Isn't that right? Hillbilly Gorgon? Hillbilly Gorgon? What kind of talk is that to talk about your mother-in-law? Mm, well, <clears throat> Opal is something of a character. Yeah, to say the least. Oh, but, well, Ted knows how to handle characters, don't you, sweetheart? I cannot tell you how grateful I am that you got home when you did. Well, from what I understand, Opal did quite a number on Dixie while I was in Hawaii. Oh, quite a number? My goodness. Well, she fed the baby ice cream, Myra, if you can believe that. And then I had hired this Mrs. Uh, Gurney, this woman to babysit for me, right? She's a very nice lady. And, and Opal... Gossiping. I sound just terrible, don't I? I mean, I shouldn't. I would, you just will not, will not think about mistakes of the past. That's all. That's right. Isn't that all? Dixie. What? I think he wants a brownie. Do you? Well, Ted, he, he can't have one. Well, say what you will. I think this kid is desperate uh, for another sugar fix. Well, sweetheart, darling, you cannot have a brownie, darling. No, no. Brownies are not for you. If Opal got him hooked on sugar, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might uh, just. I, I wouldn't squeeze him too hard if I were you. Why? He had sort of an accident. <laughs> you went, darling. You're terrible. Okay, well, I'll just have to change him. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Stay away from those brownies. Oh. Sure thing, hon. No problem. Give me one of those things. Uh, uh, uh. You know, Myra, my wife has a heart of gold. She does, pure gold. Yeah, I wanted to kill Opal for doing that to her. How much longer is Opal going to stay with you? Well, she'd be gone by now if I had my way. I was prepared to give her walking papers when I came back from Hawaii, but, uh, well, she did this number on Dixie, and Dixie went for it like a ton of bricks. Dixie is trying to love Opal because Opal is your mother. <sighs> yeah, well, I think Dixie's just got a soft spot in her heart for wayward puppies, birds with broken wings, and mothers-in-law with a bad back. Yes, well, that sympathetic soul of hers is one of the le reasons you love her so much. You know? Hmm? Before I met Dixie, I never thought I was capable of loving somebody that much. Hang on to that, because Opal can't last forever. No. Yeah. It'll just seem like forever. What are the... Is everything set? You all ready? Yeah. Let's go home. Let's get it over with. Listen, <laughs> okay. you got the baby sex bottle? Um, yeah, yeah. Here you go. It's empty. <laughs> yeah, so? Right. Uh, listen, have you any apple juice or anything I could put in here? Plenty. Help it's yourself. just insurance. Help yourself. Oh, go, go. Thank you. Ah, uh, listen, thank you so much for everything, okay? And tell Palmer that we're sorry that we missed him. And cross your fingers, please, for us, that Opal will be asleep by the time I get home. Yeah, honey, can I uh, put my two cents in where it's um, none of my business? Oh. Honey, I, I, you feel sorry for it, and I understand that. Jasper has a bad back, and it, it's very hard to watch somebody suffer when, when you love them. But... Opal has the personality of a steamroller, and I just hate to see her take advantage of your sweet disposition. That's very nice of you, but you really mean my caving in to giving her whatever she wants. No, I mean that you're so generous it makes you vulnerable, and I don't want Opal to steamroller over you. Well, thank you very much. You know, you sound very much like Ted. 
says the same Dad thing. loves you. I love you. The whole family loves you. That's why. Thanks. Mm. Thanks a lot. <laughs> now, you and little sunshine here and Ted, you deserve your happiness. Well, we are happy. We're very happy. And we're going to stay that way. You, you bet me. Opal and Noah will stay that way. I'm sure. <laughs>